the Lord Jesus Christ gave me this vision during a time when I had been engaging in intense all night prayers to seek the Lord. So I had been through a period of staying up in the night to seek the Lord. I had started with wanting to stay up one night at the Lord's instruction. But when I stayed up that night to pray, I had a very wonderful time in the presence of the Lord. And I decided to do it again and again and again. So during that period, when I was staying up on a daily basis to pray. So on one night, the Lord Jesus Christ gave me this revelation of hell. Now, if you have come across my videos before, you know that the Lord Jesus Christ has given me revelations of hell previously in the past, right from the time when the Lord called me to start doing his work. He first started with showing me and my sister Zipporah a revelation of hell. And then he sent us to go and warn people about the reality of hell. Hell is a real place. And I know that many people do not like to hear about hell. But I'm telling you, it's much better for you to hear about hell now and repent than for you to just think that it's just fiction or an imagination. And then you actually end up there. Because the truth of the matter is that no matter how graphic the description of hell may be through people's words, through people's testimonies, the actual hell is, I don't know how many times, like thousands or millions of times, much worse than what human words can describe. So I was praying late in the night on this day and it should have been somewhere around 01 or 02 a.m. in the morning as I was engaged in intense prayer when suddenly I fell into something like a trance because I just found myself in this other place and I was so conscious of this other place I actually forgot that I had been praying you know like I lost consciousness of my physical environment and just gained consciousness of the spiritual environment where the Lord Jesus Christ took me. I found myself standing in this section of hell where the ground, you know, I don't know how to describe it, but it was something like you would imagine, maybe like a desert, but at the same time, like it's so void of life, like a desert on the ground, but at the same time, like the ground is literally made up of burning coals of fire. There were in this section, you know, there were what looked like little hills, you know, of things that looked like rocks or something piled up here and there. I saw some things like that, you know, but they were literally also burning, you know, like the whole place was on fire burning. But what the Lord drew my attention to is that I saw entire families in hell i saw families of people who had died and reunited in hell and it was a very 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 sad thing like i remember i saw different sizes of families in this section people were grouped up together and you know in the spiritual realm like when you see something immediately understanding is given to you because when i saw these groups of people in hell immediately the lord gave me the understanding that these were human families that had reunited in hell families whereby uh, the the husband the wife and the children they had all ended up in hell and then they were bunched up together like burning together in hell and of course still they didn't have that sense of unity because in hell you don't feel that you know according to what the lord jesus christ has shown me even in past visions and revelations of hell is that even though you may be among so many people like hell is a place of extreme loneliness so even though they were bunched up together it didn't feel like okay i'm with my family no but these people were in intense torment unimaginable torment there were families, you know, that were larger in size. 
I saw people that looked like maybe like eight, a group of eight people or maybe a group of six people. And then I also saw smaller groups of people, like maybe like four people or three people. But there were different sizes of people and they were all bunched up together. And these people were in extreme torment in hell. You know, I remember when I was standing there, I heard the crackling sound of fire. If you have been, you know, in a place like uh, where you make fire using firewood, you know that crackling sound like from the firewood as the wood burns. That was the sound that I could hear. But when I looked at the people, it was actually the people's bodies that were burning up. Like their bodies had burnt up so much you know because the human body is made up of water but these people had burnt up so much it just seemed as though their bodies were just dried up firewood on fire if you know what i mean like their body parts their arms their legs they literally looked like pieces of firewood they looked like pieces of firewood that was set on fire and then i understood you know like that was the crackling sound i was hearing it was literally people burning in the flames so when the lord showed me this vision of hell i knew that the reason why these people had come to hell as, as entire families you know it doesn't mean they died at once you know like whichever family member died and then they would more like be reunited to be punished together. The Lord gave me the understanding that the reason why these people were in hell as families together is because these were families that were united in sin and in ungodliness. You know, so many times people fail to follow Jesus because of their family, because they feel like being obedient to Jesus Christ, living a lifestyle of sin is going to alienate them from their family. And so they live a life of sin. And then they raise up their children to live a life of sin just in order to get this society's acceptance and approval. You know, but at the end of the day, we have a human soul and we are on a personal journey regardless of which family you come from you are on a personal journey your own journey between you and jesus christ and you're going to die one day and it's a personal decision to follow jesus christ so there are people who would raise up their children in an ungodly way you know because they take it for granted like oh these are children you know but once children reach an age of accountability where they're old enough to know right from wrong they can go to hell they are accountable to god that is why the lord emphasizes that you need to bring up children in the way of the lord if we feel that we have to let children you know to grow up in the worldly standards to grow up in sin just in order to be normal and then we think that maybe when they are old that's when we're going to teach them about jesus by then it's going to be already too late because what if your children die before that time that you think is appropriate? Because if sin leads to such a, a place of terrible torment, hell, how can you think that your child is too young to learn about holiness and righteousness? Yet your child is not too young to learn about things that are going to lead them to such a horrible place. It's just deception from Satan. So there were people who had ended up in hell as entire families who were united in their sin because they only wanted the, the love and approval from each other and they rejected Jesus Christ. And they also raised their children to live in sin. Hell is really a terrible place. Many people get offended when we talk about hell because it's so graphic. But the truth is that if we look at Jesus' own description about hell, we're going to find that it's graphic. Because Jesus said that it's better for you to cut off your hand or to pluck out the eye 
that is causing you to sin than for your whole body to be thrown in hell. That tells us something. It tells us that hell must be a very terrible place whereby the pain of you personally cutting off your hand that is causing you to sin is much better than for you to be thrown in hell whereby you plucking out your eye that is causing you to sin is much better than you being thrown into the fires of hell. And Jesus also describes hell as the place where the worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. Jesus also describes hell as the place where people gnash their teeth. He describes it as a place of torment when he was telling the story of Lazarus and the rich man in Luke 16. Jesus said that hell is a place of thirst. And if hell is a place of thirst, it tells you that it's also a place of great hunger. It's a place of restlessness, torment, such that earth begins to seem like such a paradise. And that is the reason why when we look at the terrible way Jesus died for us on the cross, that should give us an idea of how terrible hell is. Because if God would prefer for his son to die such a terrible death on the cross just to save us from hell, it must show us that then hell must be so terrible that that is why the cross was worth it. If hell was a place of luxury, if it was a bearable place, there would be no need, like God would not even bother. But God loved us and he wanted to save us from that terrible place. But he has given us the free will to accept the free gift of salvation. And of which, in order for us to be saved, we must believe in Jesus Christ. Not only to say that we believe, but it must be action. Faith without works is dead. Our, our lifestyle, it must testify and it must show that we truly believe in Jesus Christ. Because when you and I die, one day we are going to die. But are we going to find ourselves in heaven or are we going to find ourselves in hell? There are only these two destinations. Hell is not a place where you go to today and tomorrow you are back. If you just end up in hell, you are doomed. You are doomed. Forever you will never, ever, ever get out. That is how terrible hell is. There's no way out. It has an entry, but no exit. No matter how terrible the torment may get, there's no rest, no rescue, even just for one moment. You can't say, let me rest for at least one moment before the punishment continues. I remember some time back, the Lord had given my husband a dream about hell about the torment of hell and in that dream what the Lord showed him was that all the different types of punishments or torments that are in hell like whichever torment that may be picked out you know to be a to be meted out whichever punishment that may be chosen to be given to someone who is in hell like whichever type of torment that it is, the person who's going to be punished would do anything to escape it. In other words, what I mean is, if somebody is about to be given this specific type of torment, they will, they will, they will go like, please, please spare me from this torment. Or they would go like, please give me any other punishment but not this one but even if you choose the next one they're going to think please anything else but not this one and then what god was showing him was that whichever punishment that may be chosen for you in hell like each person in hell who gets to experience those torments and those punishments they usually think Lord, if 
only you could remove this torment but when you move to the next torment you still feel the same way like lord anything else but not this type of punishment but then you know all the punishments are like that even the least punishment it feels like that like it's better if this punishment is eliminated from hell let them like you can do anything else but not this one but even if they bring the next one you still feel the same way that it's that terrible that is why jesus talked about hell over and over and over he talked about hell a lot warning people to say there will be gnashing of teeth there will be weeping there will be darkness the fire there is never quenched the worms there that devour the flesh of the people they never die they do not die no matter what and for all eternity you just keep experiencing the torments over and over and over and many people say oh no hell cannot be real because god is a loving god i remember when jesus gave me the first revelation of hell and this is exactly what he told me he said you know people say that hell is not real they say hell is not real that because god is love you know they say hell is not real and he said but how can you talk about my judgment when you don't even know me you do not know god's righteous nature so how can you even talk about his judgment how can you talk about his judgment and say no god cannot allow someone to go to hell god made a way out of hell through jesus christ his death on the cross but he says that we must bear fruit of righteousness we cannot just profess him while living in sin there has to be a difference people have been caught up in a dead religion where you go to church on sunday on weekdays or wherever you volunteer in church you sing so beautifully maybe you even preach but then you go back to your home you go and you close yourself up watching pornography you go and you you turn on the tv shows that are full of vulgar language foul language that are full of nakedness and immorality you go and drink you go and wear half naked and you sing about heaven and you say you're going to the kingdom of heaven let me tell you something jesus told me when he gave me the revelation of hell he told me that you must be holy and it, he said to me that even gossip something that looks like a simple thing just gossip it can land you in hell so cut off all the sins no matter how small they may seem if you are in a habit of lying examine yourself because even just lying you might end up in that place unless you repent even just a simple thing like gossiping dressing half naked stealing drinking sexual immorality you are in a relationship with someone you're not married to and you're kissing you're engaging in sexual acts if you die in your sin you will go to this place and there is no exit and that is why jesus christ has sent me with this vision of warning you know so that you don't just escape hell alone but his desire is that entire families may escape hell so that you raise your children in the fear of god from a very young age that is what jesus had told me he told me from a very young age don't neglect the little children 3 year olds 4 year olds start teaching them holiness they must be holy to the lord they must be separated to the lord god cares about the little children if you neglect the children they are going to perish but god is going to hold you the parents accountable being a parent is such a huge responsibility in the eyes of the lord because he has given you the instruction he said the laws that have given you tell them to your children when you are lying down when you are sitting when you are eating when you are walking no matter what you are doing teach your children the fear of god tell them this is displeasing to our god tell them you must be separated to the lord 
Tell them you must be different. They have a soul. And if your child is going to reach an age of accountability and you have brought them to love sin, this is the place they will end up in. The place that most people feel it's too graphic. They don't want to hear videos talking about hell. It's too graphic. But you're letting young children end up there. Whatever description that we may give, it can never paint the real picture of just how graphic, just how bad, how horrible the place is. But Jesus Christ has made a way of escape from hell. But if you end up in hell, you can never get out. The time to escape hell is now. To live in the fear of God. No matter what sin that is in your life, examine yourself. We all have to examine ourselves. We have to live in holiness. Life is very serious. We cannot just be careless. Just start watching everything on TV. Just start listening to everything. You will end up in hell. You will end up in hell. So many TV shows are meant to take people to hell. Filled with blasphemy. People, that is what the Lord was telling me. That People are blaspheming my name all day. And you're calling it entertainment. All they're talking about is sexual immorality. You're calling it entertainment. It's filled with foul language. You're calling it entertainment. You must be holy in everything that you do. You must be living in the fear of the Lord. You are not the owner of your life. And Jesus Christ has given you this chance today in order to escape from hell into eternal life. And you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven unless you are holy. The blood of Jesus Christ will cover your past sins, but Jesus Christ requires to see the fruit that you are truly his follower.